Good evening. Today I'm going to show you what I believe is one of the easiest ways to create train videos or any videos for that matter using Windows Movie Maker. Now in the olden days you used to have XP, Windows 2000, things like that. It's much better and easier to use Windows 7 and the reason for that is because of this. This is Windows 7 Home Premium Edition and this has built in the video codecs that you need to um, transcode all your stuff into Movie Maker without conversion. That is a very important process that has been eliminated because you don't need to convert your videos in order to use them in Windows 7. You connect your camera, you put the videos into Windows Movie Maker and it pretty much does it by itself. I am going to demonstrate that now. This is my laptop, or should I say it's Joanne's. It's very small as you can see. My hand is half the size of the keyboard. Um, it's a very small screen, I hope you'll be able to see it. When you power on the computer, it takes a few minutes, well two minutes maybe, to power up. We'll just wait for this to boot up. Windows 7, by the way, is a very good operating system. It's the best one that Microsoft have done in recent years. Now, just for specification purposes, this is running Windows 7 Home Premium Edition. And this is a Intel Core i3 processor. Again, I'll just say that that's a Intel Core i3 processor. Now there is an i5 and an i7, they're much more powerful. Um, this computer has 4 gig of RAM and runs about 2.6 gigahertz I think. So it is kind of powerful compared to its size. So here we have the desktop and that's my car by the way. So um, I'm going to cut off now and I'm going to start on the next bit. Right, here we go. I've brought the camera close to the screen image and the computer itself so you can see a little bit more clearly what's going on. Okay, some people have the icon for Movie Maker on their desktop. Um, just to make something clear, um, it doesn't, Movie Maker does not come with the Windows disk. You have to download it, it's free, but you have to download it. So if you know how to use Google, just type in Microsoft Essentials and um, the rest will take care of itself. It's quite easy to install. It might give you other options to download like Windows Mail and other things, but you're only interested in Movie Maker, so it's up to you if you want to download that or not. Once it is downloaded, on here I click on Windows Movie Maker, you can't see it, it's off the top of the screen. So I'm going to click on Windows Live Movie Maker and that will come up with the blank template. I'll just pull out here. Now before you start doing anything on Movie Maker, the first thing you need to do is make sure that in the project tab apparently this is only in the latest version or the Windows 7 version you make sure that you've got the widescreen 16.9 option checked that's if your camera is filming in HD if it's not filming in HD then you want to click the standard 4x3 button if you get this the wrong way around you will have a border around your image Apparently the XP version of this does not have this, so I would assume that what it tries to do is it tries to fit widescreen into a 4-3 ratio regardless. So that will always create a border. So we're going to um, insert some videos now. Now I've got some on my stick. I've shamefully, shamefully downloaded these from the internet.
Now these are files that have, they're just raw files. So we have to wait a second here. Okay, well, we don't need that. So we'll click on add videos and photos. Okay, there's some clips that I had from before. Um, where do we want to go? We want to go to the F drive video. Okay, I'm going to highlight all four files. I'm only going to put four files in. They are in MP4 video format. I'm going to click open. And this is a process that anyone that's used Movie Maker will be aware of. Um, the files, whatever format they're in, they need to be reprocessed so that they can be edited. They cannot be edited in their raw format. What Movie Maker does, it puts them into a format which can be edited. Now, depending on the size of these files, it could take minutes, it could take half an hour, it could take longer, it just depends. Um, most people shoot in short bursts, so each file probably only takes a minute, a minute and a half at the most. Even in HD on this computer it takes not very long. But then again, if you try and do a hundred all at once, then it will take quite a long time. Now I can see the progress bar at the bottom, you cannot, it's almost three quarters of the way. The timer will disappear on the files when they are becoming ready to process or edit. Three, two, one, boom. Okay, so when the files are ready to edit, they come up in the thumbnail screen, which is on the left, or should I say the browser screen, and you can click play, and the file begins to play. So as you can see, no, no, no conversion process required, it's just there. Um, it's all ready to be edited. So I'm going to do um, a few edits. I'm going to do my usual transitional effects. These are all things that people that have used Movie Maker should know how to do. Basically, I'm just putting transitional effects between the clips so that it doesn't cut from one to the other straight. It actually darkens and then becomes brighter, and then you've got your new clip there. Um, it just makes it slightly more professional when it happens like this. Um, So what I'm doing is I'm muting the volume before the clip ends and I'm muting it at the end of the clip as well so that it all sort of fades in and fades out nicely. So I've done um, some quick edits and if we play it through now this is what happens. It's black, then you see the cliff and the stony, rocky ocean waterfront. There's 2 minutes and 38 seconds here. Now this video is in 720, um, I didn't want to do proper 1080 HD because it would take too long to process for this video. Um, the quality is good still, it's not, not top top quality but it's three quarters of the way to the top. Like I said I just ripped these from YouTube, they're just sample videos. Someone's holiday snap or something and they've just um, got the camera out and made a little sample of video for their camera. Okay, we're coming to the first end of the first edit. Here it comes, it fades out, fades in. So now we're looking at some monkeys. Oh, 
This is the third edit. Some streets in America, I would guess, or somewhere like that. And now the fourth edit, which is of a dog. Lots of dogs and a horse. And this comes to the end of this demonstration. So what I've done is I've, post I've collected together four clips from the internet and I've put them into Movie Maker. It's processed them quite quickly and um, so it's ready to be saved in other words and um, we can save the file um, as, as a full edit. Um, basically this is the finalization process which makes this all one video. Okay while you are away I used sound recorder to um, put dialogue, commentary if you like on top and I used sound recorder and essentially that was that program there when you click start recording you just talk what I did is um, I just muted the video but talked while it was playing so I could do the commentary without the sound of the video and then what I did is overlapped the um, it creates a WMA file um, this is it here um, you put it there by putting it on your hard drive or wherever and you add music and you select the point at which you want to add the audio file. So I have put it here, as you can see. Um, now we have certain options. We've got music options and video options. The music option appears when you add music. It's not there normally. Um, but you can select what mu if you want music to be, or should I say audio file. It, it thinks it's going to be music, but it can be commentary if you like. So. Um, what I did here is I've taken the video volume and I've put it down a little bit so that you can hear my voice over the top. So this is what it sounds like now. Bear in mind the speakers on this laptop are tiny so you might not be able to hear it that well. Okay, so pause it. I'll put it nearer to the end so you don't have to watch it all again. Okay, bear in mind that I use the built-in microphone as well, so um, the, I don't have recording type capabilities here apart from what's built into the actual computer. So I'm going to make this my final edit, so I just go to here, save movie, and um, you can do it several different ways. Um, 
The top option, this one, says recommended for this project, and that's mostly to do with resolutions. If you're if you're uh, filming in widescreen, it will make it widescreen. It will make it 720 or 1080, whatever the resolution is. It, it will say, let's keep the resolution the same as what the raw file was from the camera. Um, so it does some, it does some of the, the uh, work for you if you're not knowledgeable about ratios and resolutions. Um, if you want to force it in high definition, it will, if your raw material is 1080 resolution, then it will not do much. It will just convert it to a Windows Media file um, that is 1080. It won't do much more than that. But if you give the raw file in a lower resolution, what it will do is it will try to up res it. But I would not do that personally because it doesn't do anything major except make your file huge. Um, if you have... Um, a good TV, it's going to upscan it anyway, and it will do just as good a job, but your files will be smaller, and you'll let your TV do the hard work rather than Windows Media Maker. I would personally go for recommended for this project for most people, especially if you're not using a HD camera that's proper 1080. It will say full HD on your camera if it is full HD, which is 1080. If it's not saying full HD on your camera, use recommended for this project you're not going to get any benefits from forcing high definition here um, i would ignore the rest of the options unless you want to burn a dvd i wouldn't use dvds personally because the highest resolution they go up to is 480 or 550 i think if you're um, in the european market then you're you're going to get pow which is um about 550 lines but it's still short of HD by quite a margin um, it just depends on how you want to play it back um, I'm going to talk a little bit about playback prospects in a bit but for all intents and purposes use for this project recommended for this project I'm just calling it my movie saving it to the desktop and that will go away and do its thing now um, while it's doing this 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 takes ages for my normal train videos because obviously anyone that's familiar with my train videos knows that they're quite long. Uh, um, this is only a 720 selection of videos and it's only 2 minutes and 38 minutes long. Um, this would normally take up to 2 hours, 2 and a half hours on a regular edit for me because my um, files are 1080 and they're long. <laughs> Um, sometimes the computer goes berserk because it can't handle all that mem all that file size in memory. Um, this has four gigabytes of memory and it still struggles. So if you're using 1080, uh, make sure a that your PC has adequate specification for that, and b make sure that you have a fast upload speed because if you use high definition, the file size is gigantic. I've had six gigabyte files before even on a 20 megabyte connection which i currently have that takes about eight hours to upload because the um, upload speed is one tenth of your download speed and as a result of that it means that you're going to be waiting a very very long time and if there is a break in service you have to start again there is no restart checkpoint so um, it's very important i take my pc to work where I can upload at 100 megabytes speed, which only takes like seven minutes or something ridiculous, um, which is why I upload on weekends because I have a lot of free time at work on weekends. So that's that. Um, so here we go, it's 52%, it's not gonna take all day. Um, while I'm here, um, I want to cover a certain amount of points. Um, if you are using XP and you want your computer to play back videos, you need the XP codec pack. So that's um, something we'll talk about. Um, it, won't, uh, it won't give you more functionality in Movie Maker, but it will allow your PC to play video files of any format in the Windows Media Player, which is the built-in media player. Um, I don't have it on my um, 
computer at the moment at the bottom here usually when I click on any file it just plays it um, we can do that while this is while this is going along what I'll do is um, I'll bring up the desktop I'll bring up my Richard directory um, so these are files from my camera they're raw files and um, I just double click them and they will play in Windows Media Player because the codecs are built in um, the actual um, quality is much better when you play the raw file actually Movie Maker makes it slightly worse simply because it doesn't support 50 frames per second it only supports 30 frames per second so it does get slightly more juddery um, when you're editing in Movie Maker um, that's just one of the restrictions of the service it doesn't make any difference for your viewers on YouTube because 30 frames per second is the most YouTube supports as well okay now for all intents and purposes I'm going to play it back one more time it's saying it's ready right so I'm pressing play movie mate um, sorry movie Windows movie player has now started So anyway, I'm not going to show you all this video. What I'll do is I'll bolt it onto the end of this edit that I'm going to put online for you so you'll be able to see the end result at the end of the um, video. So um, another thing that I want to talk to you about in a future video is the ways to play back your um, footage. Now, this is obviously on PC. A lot of people play back their stuff on PC. What I'm going to do now is set up my piece of kit and I'm going to show you how I watch your train videos sometimes and how I watch my own train videos. So um, stick with me. I'll give you a slight demonstration and you can leave comments in the YouTube comments area. Tell me what you think of how I watch videos. Right, I'm just going to do um, a couple of tricks, show you some things on Windows. Um, the first thing that I want to show you is um, how to get Internet Explorer, sorry, not Internet Explorer, um, just Explorer, Windows Explorer. To get Windows Explorer, and this works on any Windows, you press Windows key and E. That's how quick it is. You don't have to click on the start button, look for Internet Explorer. Best thing is, when you do it my way, which is just Windows key and E, it comes up with the, a, with the C drive straight away. So, you know, you're starting from where you want to start off with. If you do it from the start button, it starts you off from the start button, which is not really a good place to start. Hardly anything's there. So, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you. The other thing I want to show you is um, to there's a tool here called Snipping Tool. It was um, created in Vista, so it's not in XP, but it is in Vista and Windows 7, and I assume it's in Windows 8. Um, I've put it on my um, taskbar here, um, Snipping Tool. And you might think, well, what snipping tool? Well, this is what snipping tool does. Um, I'm going to bring up, let's say, um, you're on a website. Let's say we go to eBay. Okay, and we're in eBay, and I think to myself, wow, I like that football picture and perhaps it might be copyrighted or protected or something like that what you do is you click on snipping tool and what happens is the screen goes grey and you just draw a box around the image 
and then you click save desktop call it ball now if I look down here there's a picture of the ball there you go, I have a picture of the ball and that's snipping tool and if you have Windows 7 all you have to do to get it is type in the search thing snipping tool and it will come up there um, in Windows 7 you just right click on it and you just um, pin it to start menu um, or taskbar or whatever it says um, and then you get the icon down here at the bottom so um, they're two really useful things um, the third option well the third thing I want to show you is YTD um, YTD allows you to download other people's YouTubes and the way it works is really simple you just type YouTube I'm just going to pick anyone right so here you go here's Hayden's um, here's Hayden's video of the Duchess so I've just copied the URL you just hover over this box here and it puts the URL into the box you click 1080 full HD download <clears throat> and it's downloading now and then you highlight it and then you can click open opens the file location and when it's actually downloaded it will open the file or the location of the file um, so there you go so where is it there you go Duchess of Sutherland double click and now I have Hayden's video in 1080 sorry Hayden for ripping your video off but I was just doing a demonstration I'll delete that but it's nice to have compilations of other people's videos I do it myself I have lots of other people's videos um, the other good thing is um, if you go to convert um, if you um, let's say one of the videos here that I'm using for this video um, if I select it desktop I'm going to go to 409 Ooh. where is it? it's not there I wonder why it's not there oh that's not good is it? let's drag it across and I want to get the mp3 of it convert video and it, and it goes off and what it's doing now it's making it's extracting just the audio from that file so it's not it's not actually um, doing anything to the original file but what it's doing is extracting just the video just the audio from that file so if I now open that and it's over here I'll drag it across so this this now is mp3 of that video. Good evening. Today I'm going to show you what I believe is one of the easiest ways to create train videos or any videos for that matter. So there you go. That's uh, another tool, basic YTD. It's free. Just Google it. YTD, YouTube Downloader it stands for. Um, it's a very good program. I use it all the time. It's one of the most common programs that I use. Um, also that can be used for commentary as well like you can um, like I used my PC to record before but what I could have done which would have probably been better much better is to um, talk into the camera while the um, while the edit was running in Movie Maker and I could have had a running commentary on my camera and then 
transferred the file to my PC, used YTD to do the conversion, extract the MP3, put the MP3 over Movie Maker on the edits, and, and that would have worked just as well, if not even better. Um, it's a great, it's a great, fantastic tool. I, I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, so that's that. Hello again. I bet you never thought this would be on here. Right, um, this is um, your ID screen on a PlayStation 3. Um, now most people um, think that PlayStations are pl gaming machines. You play arcade games and fighting games and all sorts of games. Now, if you're one of these people that just has a DVD player, then watch this. Here we are, I've got my PlayStation 3 controller. I'm going to switch it on now, because it's uh, wireless by the way. It works by Bluetooth. Okay, so, what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to turn my TV up a bit. There you go, turn the volume up a bit. Now this, on my setup the sound comes out of the PC speakers that you can see either side of the screen. Now pushing X on the controller, which is a bit like the enter button, I'm going to select my ID, Richie B1971. Now you can see that you've got loads of icons that you're probably not familiar with, but if I just shift over to the left, You've got games, and they're the names of games. Sorry about that. Okay, and then you've got like TV services like YouTube, Netflix, BBC iPlayer, that type of thing. But then over here you've got video. Now, you can actually copy your files to the PlayStation 3. Um, it's quite easy, you just need a thumbstick, USB stick, works quite simple, you just you press triangle, select copy, it copies it to the hard drive on the PS3 system. Um, now I've got 18 videos here of trains, um, and these are all my files um, that I've created over the last two years. So. This is how I watch my videos when I want to watch them back to myself. So I press X, which is the same as Enter. Now I've selected Barnaby. So I select X. I'm going to turn it down a bit so I can speak. So as you can see, um, it's, it's checkpointed the video, I watched it to this point the last time I played it. Um, so as you can see, um, the PS3 or PlayStation 3 is much more powerful than the PCs that you can buy for £120. PS3s or PlayStation 3s are quite powerful and they can easily handle 1080p. The other thing is um, what I'm really excited about with the PS3, if you press the square button on the controller whilst you're inside the video, you get thumbnails 60 seconds apart, so you don't need chapters because the chapters are built in. So if I start again from the beginning, I just go to scene one, and then that's 60 seconds later, that's 120 seconds later, that's 180 seconds, and so on, and so on. So if I want to go right near the end of the video I can just go boom and there it is press square again don't want to see that 60 anymore let's say we want to see a nighttime scene one of my cool nighttime scenes from Barnaby So there you have it, um, if you want to see Eastley, 
I press triangle for example let's say play from the beginning so that for example if I had had watched it to a certain point before and now I want to watch it from the beginning then you just press X and play from the beginning and then you've got my video from the beginning Now the benefits to this are that if you want to make a video and show your family you don't need to be hooking up PCs to your TV you don't we have to you don't need cables all over the place you've got a system that's already built into your TV um, you you don't have to watch it in DVD quality because it's already in 1080 so if you've got a full HD camera you really want to be watching it on full screen now in order to make this work you do need to get the file back from YouTube in an MP4 format um, that is quite easy to do um, there is actually an option in your own account where it says download mp4 um, if you look at your settings for each of the videos it does actually come up with a download mp4 file of that particular video um, once you've done that to your computer you just transfer it to your PlayStation 3 and there you go you've, you've, you've got it made there's nothing else that you need to do um, Just last one, just go into. Uh, I don't know if this one's checkpoint or not. You can also put pictures on as well. There's pictures. You can turn it upside down, you can zoom in, zoom out. It's very clever stuff, very powerful. You look at um, landscapes, these are just pictures I copied off the internet. But um, so there you go. Just zoom in. If they're really high quality pictures, then you can actually get some, you know, really good zooms. So there you go. You can move it around. It's really easy to do. Take your time. But you can even do it in such a way that you're. Um, you can even do it in such a way that you've got music playing in the background as well, a bit like the PC. These are my wedding pictures. There you go, who's that handsome guy? That'll be me. So, um, there you go. That's um, PlayStation 3. I just wanted to put that in there because it is quite cheap now. It's very cheap. And I would probably get one before they get discontinued by the PlayStation 4 because they are quite powerful, very good machines. You can stick it under your TV um, and it will do... It will make life a bit easier if you've got a crappy PC. If you've got a super powerful PC having a PlayStation 3 isn't going to do anything but tidy up a few cables and that but if you've got like a choppy PC and you don't want to spend more than £150 and you want good video quality then this is something I would recommend but obviously it's a learning curve for some people. It is a games machine. It's designed to be um, played by you know 10 year olds so you know, although it does have a learning curve, it shouldn't be that difficult. Um, so I don't find it that hard. So we'll see. There's lots of settings on here that you can play around with. But there you go. Anyway, I'm going to end this video now. It's been going on long enough. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the ride. And um, if you want to know more about this subject, I'm more than willing to answer questions on anything that I've shown you. Okay, here we have clip one. Clip one is with a cliff and it's very pretty. Just zooming in now onto the waves, onto the rock shore. How pretty is that? Moving down.
down the rocks. Zooming back out. Look at those people over there. into edit two. Oh, you will see the couple of monkeys. Yay, yeah, yeah. the monkeys. What are you doing? No? Oh, I'm not sure, no? But we can do it. Oh, you turn around. Oh, you, you, you. Two monkeys. Oh, let's go photo. Photo, photo. Now we're in the buildings. Little boy on the bike. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Shine in another country. Lots of tall buildings. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom out, zoom out. Transition. Little doggies. The horse. Whee! Little playful things. The horse doesn't want to know. That's that then. And this comes to the end of our video. Bye for now.